Good morning or good afternoon. I'm not sure what time it is now. Thank you for having me at your Congress. Uh, I am Jeroen Schmaal from uh, Belanda. I'm a director overseas from a drinking water company, Oasen. Um, and I will tell you today about salinization and research we did. I'm sorry I could not come at your Congress. It was too short notice for me. So I will do it like this and I hope it will work uh, and you can understand what I say and follow me. Um, I will start the presentation. In the summer of 2008, I and Christ, we were uh, in Pontianak and we met the vice major and the director of Pedian Pontianak. And they asked us a question. They said, can you help us with knowledge about salinization? Because the city of Pontianak, we have a problem. Every few years there's the dry period, the Camaro, and in this dry period, uh, the salt water from the sea comes into the river and it makes our water salt. And we do not have a good solution. So could you help us with knowledge about it to find a good solution? We went to the University of Delft, this is the university we work together with, and we asked these two guys, Pak Frederik and Pak Rendert, and we asked them, can you help us? Can you help us do research? And they said, yes, we can help, we can do research, so they did. So um, I will tell you today about their research, about the solutions, the possible solutions they see for the salt problem of Pontianak. Um, first, let me show you um, the satellite photo of Pontianak. Here you can see the um, sky picture of Pontianak. You can see the two rivers, the Landak, the Kapos Kachil, um, and you can see how they go into the sea. And here is the city of Pontianak. And Pontianak relies for its fresh water on these two rivers. Um, at 22 kilometers from the sea, they have their intake of fresh, raw water from the rivers. And what's the problem? Um, the salt seawater comes into the river from the sea um, and it goes up to almost 50 kilometers at the very driest of period. It goes up to 50 kilometers into the land. And, and at that moment, uh, the water intake of Pontianak uh, doesn't get any fresh water here, but the water is salt. Um, this is Frederick, Pak Frederick from the University of Delft, and he did research uh, on the subject. So he went, you can see him here on the river, he was on the river for weeks, measuring, measuring, measuring. And what did he find? He found that at the driest of periods, at the center of the Kamaru, the uh, salt water from the sea came all the way into the land. And you can see it here, up to 50, 51, 52 kilometers into the land. Here you can see uh, the salt level, and here you can see the kilometers that it came into the land. So if you look at 22 kilometers, the water here was very, very salt. Um, I've got another picture of that. This is the measuring of the salt level in the water at the uh, Landak intake. So this is where they get the water from the river to make drinking water out of it. And the red line is the, uh, the minimum level or the maximum level from the World Health Organization. They say to drink the water, you can only have a maximum of 250 parts per million. And you can see here that it rises up to maybe 10,000 uh, parts per million. Um, so it gets very, very salt, the water, and it's absolutely undrinkable. So we have a huge problem. And the problem is that the salinization level is uh, 16 times and sometimes even 40 times too high. And if it's only for a day, well, what's the problem? But the Kamaru 
uh, we know from history, the Camaru, uh, it's from 30 and sometimes up to 110 days. So you have 110 days a salt problem for your drinking water. That's a huge problem. So what's the uh, solution they use now? Because the people of Pontianic know this problem and they found a solution years ago. And what is the solution? They get the water from up the river, from Penapot, 52 kilometers up the river, and they pump it via a pipeline to the city of Pontianac. In this way, they get uh, fresh water. But is this good enough? No, it's not, because the Penapot pipeline, because it's called like that, um, it's too expensive. The, the fuel you need to get the water from Penapot to um, uh, the city of Pontianac, it's too much and it's too expensive. Um, the capacity of the system is too low. Um, you only get one quarter of what you need, so it's too low. Um, and the third, the pipeline is too old, so it's leaking all the time uh, when you use it. In practice, only 30% of the time in the dry period, they can use the paint and pot line. And it delivers only in this 30% of the time a quarter of the water you need. So the paint and pot at this moment is not a good solution. So we did a second research. We know now that the river comes, uh, gets salt, that the sea gets into the river. Um, you can also see that it comes for a very long period into the river. Um, so what to do about it? And then came uh, Pak Rindert and uh, he did a gathering of all the solutions that were found by the people of Pontianak uh, and also by professors and by the university a lot of solutions, and he uh, put them together. And he had six solutions, and I'll show them to you. The first solution, and it's uh, at this moment they're building on it, is a new pipeline next to the Penapot pipeline. It's a new pipeline, a stronger, newer, uh, a bit more capacity. This is one solution, they're building on it right now. Uh, and it will take some years to, to finish it. Um, and the questions there are from this pipeline is still, uh, will it bring enough water to the city? Is it good enough? Is it big enough? And still, the costs. Is it cheap enough? Because you still need this fuel to pump it to the city. But this is the first solution. They're working on it right now. 